It's Joe Cairns! Hello there, Matthew. Good to see you. How are you in, as the sun sets on the Liffey in Dublin? What's happening, man? Well, the sun is shining and it's been uh, it's been a beautiful few days, which in itself may be part of a problem at this stage. Maybe if it was raining, we'd be better off. Yes, exactly. So lockdown seems to be over in London by uh, the youth in our street. Is similar something similar happening over there? It's mixed. Uh, it is certainly not over. We're still in the early stages of releasing the lockdown. But uh, with, the, with the holiday weekend and with the exams having been cancelled, some students seem to have, let's say, gone over the top. And there were huge problems in Cork last night with wild parties, which is a huge worry. And the danger of a second wave or having to close down again is really worrying people at the moment. But I also like to, I'm an optimist, like to believe they're, they're, they're not all doing that kind of thing. But it certainly did happen. Exactly. Well, I think it's 50-50, isn't it? I think the statistics have shown that, say, under 30 is about 50% have regularly broken the rules and 50% haven't. So just we yeah. just pray that our neighbours are in the right 50%, really. Let's move on. As an intercultural reporter, what have you been thinking about? What have you been observing or seeing? There are two aspects to this uh, lockdown and, and the, the pandemic that have, I think, have affected Ireland particularly. I'm sure other countries in the same way, but just thinking specifically about Ireland. And, and the two things are about family and how families care for each other and the role of funerals in society. So in Ireland, funerals are a big thing. and We're not unique in that, but, but they are big in Ireland. We do funerals very well. And funerals are a very important part of the grieving process and the process of community. But during the pandemic, so for example, as I, I, I've said many times, you might have met somebody in a pub 10 years ago and I shared a pint and you hear the guy died, so you feel you should go to the funeral. So we have big funerals, so they've all been stopped and only a very small numbers can go to a funeral. And therefore, people have been really stressed by that. And there's talk of, you know, they've done stuff virtually, but really that doesn't work. Uh, my own mother died in January just before this happened and we had a wonderful funeral and it was very helpful to all those involved. So those who are missing that, it is a big stress. The other part of Irish life, which is, a, you know, again, not unique to Ireland, but it's the, the, the sense of family and family looking after each other. So my wife is from a very large family who are incredibly supportive of each other, but they have one family member who's been very unwell, one of her older sisters. And in normal course of events, the family would get around uh, in and out of the house looking after her, making sure she was being well fed, cared for, you know, didn't need anything. But in this environment, she's had to do everything through the health services with very, very little direct contact with people and was really struggling. She's doing better now, thank God. But, but she, it was, it, the stress was not just her worrying about her. It was the fact that they couldn't do all the things they normally do, yeah. which is to gather around, go to the house, yeah. bring things in and so on. So there are two aspects of Irish life that are struggling or, or have been a big impact. Yeah, this is yeah, a blockage on that freedom to express your culture. Uh, the obvious idea, yes. politically, governance, the, the signals there, any commentary on that? Seems to be better well, than the UK, but not perfect. I think things are certainly better here. We... <laughs> There were three things that happened, uh, two of them in the UK, which impacted us greatly. One was the Cheltenham uh, horse racing, yep. which people from here went to. It should have been cancelled. That was a big impact on our numbers. The other was the Liverpool uh, Federico Madrid game. A huge number of Irish fans over for that, which sounded absolutely crazy. It shouldn't have been held. And then we had the problem with Italian supporters coming here, even though the rugby match was cancelled. Yeah. We had a host okay. of Italians came here. So those three things alone probably probably affected us. But we are affected here particularly that we had an election just at the time this all hit. So we have, should have had a change of government. So we've actually had a caretaker government for the last three months, really. And it kind of leads on to, you know, I've talked before about the idea of culture is, is a response to environment. But sometimes new environmental things come along that are new, that, that cultures can't react quickly enough to respond to. So certain cultures, it's, it's not a new idea, but many cultures have done better with this than the other. I think, as I think I said to you before, Matthew, we're way too early in this to do any deep analysis. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be 10 years from now when somebody writes books on the subject. 
because there are too many factories. You know, a lot of people are giving New Zealand credit for having doing a great job, but they're in a very specific situation. Um, I'm particularly interested in the African situation. We may come back to that later. But the question of trust, trust of government, trust. is is a big factor in how well this happens. So, in other words, if if a society trusts a government or for one reason or another believes they need to react to what the government is asking them and there are two aspects one is can be by through fear <laughs> the yeah, authoritarian yeah, yeah. approach where you just do what you're told and the other is where you you know have huge trust in government like in a country like switzerland for example and um, there is in ireland i think a very high level of trust both in our our current set of politicians our current prime minister our teacher is actually very well respected and he's, he's actually a doctor himself and then uh, there are medical people that have been in front of the cameras yeah. have been truly excellent and uh, we know they're good and so as, as a re result a lot of people have responded well yeah nice but nice. it's still challenging in that um you're hearing things say for example the two meter distancing you hear from the somebody said uh, the world health organization says well one meter is enough and then there's a big row about, well, do we need two meters or one meter? Because that impacts when schools can return and things like that. So trust is a huge element of it and a, a, an ability to abide by the rules, which most people like external to Ireland would probably think we're not that good at. But in fact, given the right circumstances, we can be very good at it. When the smoking ban came in here, which was the first country outside of California. Which was seen as smoking. quite a, a shocking move, yeah. yeah. Exactly. People thought, there's no way this yeah. will work. Not a chance. But it did. And it worked almost from day one without any yeah. issues. So people respond well if they trust the message, if they trust this good. And this is very interesting as we go into a much bigger problem, which is climate change. And people not trusting figures, not yeah. trusting our politicians. You know, and, and, you know, you can have one country that trusts the politicians and acts, but we need to yeah, act as yeah, a yeah. worldwide community. Well, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's what will unify the world, isn't it? So we've got climate change, we've got COVID, we've got racism and anti-racism. Yes. And, and we have yet to have something which has unified the world. Uh, there are very, yeah. very disparate responses. But I love that. So we've got the trust in the government, uh, which is sort of based on a number of different factors, isn't it? Sort of ability, benevolence, yeah. integrity, track record, and the yeah. message. And as you say, we're coming from nobody knows. So those messages are in the context of nobody knows. Is it one metre? Is it three metres? And so forth. Yeah. Let's the, broad And the prof professionalism of the medical people as well. Exactly. I, mean, I think they get full marks in most places. They are, they are yeah. the, the leaders in terms of credibility in most places. Very good. Yes. So let's move away from Ireland into a, a sort of broader intercultural context. You were mentioning before the recording uh, Africa. Any reflections there? When all this came to pass, I, I, as you probably know, I spent two years in Ethiopia. I have a huge passion for all things Africa. In fact, I'm in the process of setting a special interest group up uh, on Africa and um, for, for C2 Europa. Um, but I uh, so we're following things pretty closely on what's happening in Africa. And there are a lot of really positive stories, particularly countries like uh, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Uganda. And yeah. they've responded, particularly uh, Uganda and Rwanda, because they've had to deal with Ebola uh, in yeah. the past. So countries that have had an experience of this, they, they know what to do. It was similar in Singapore, uh, in a lot of Eastern countries. And contrary yeah. to the outside image of Africa, there's been a lot of really, really good organization. Yeah. I've just heard reports back from a colleague who's just gone to Ethiopia and the control of visitors coming in to, is utterly professional and extremely well organized. And Rwanda is another case in point, very well organized, a lot of good response from people. But uh, poorer countries uh, have other issues. Yeah. Uh, I've yeah. listened to reports from Nigeria and uh, it, because so many people are in the casual workforce. Yep. It's not like in Europe where you can just say, well, put everybody on a special allowance. Yeah. Well, people are, don't have paperwork. They don't have, yeah. So there are challenges. And while there are very positive stories, there are really challenging ones like from Somalia, yeah. where you know there, there is a tent that the government has improved there. But I might say government, I mean, the governing of the country has improved, but it's still a very frightening. And there are cultural elements there too. 
in Somalia, uh, a lot of people are afraid to admit that somebody is seriously sick in the yeah. family because that can lead to ostracization. And yeah. the second element of that is a fatalistic view um, that, you know, if this is the will of God, we can't do anything about it. So Africa is different in that they also have to deal with the HIV epidemic, yeah. um, which they, they in varying degrees did well or badly. Um, so it's fascinating. And the culture, the response to the problem is cultural in every country. And I think the point I'm making that not every culture is suited to responding to it effectively. And we will only see through time how well different cultures deal with this. Lovely, Jeremy. Let's just sort of summarise that. So um, what are the consequences of that? Do you think diversity and inclusion, intercultural uh, tolerance is going to go down because of that? Is there going to be a sort of new judgment? You were a good country, you were a good government, you were a good tribe? Yeah, I think it's, it's going to be, again, the jury is out. Uh, I don't know how quickly we'll revert to normal behaviours. But we are seeing, you know, within Ireland, we, we see an almost uh, uh, an age division. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's all yeah. those old people who are hiding in their houses. Yeah. And it, this is compounded by another issue, a, a general impression that older people have all the money. And, you know, they, they manage to amass lots of money and, and the feeling among younger people that maybe they, you know, they've missed out and not going to be as rich as their parents or grandparents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not knowing, of course, that you know we, we struggled as well. I'm not saying it's comparable. I know that it's a very complex situation. But you're right about those divisions. Yeah. And those divisions may be driven harder. And if you look at the United States, um, yeah. I heard somebody yeah. saying last night there was a disproportionate number of African-Americans yeah. who have been suffering. Yeah. Well, the truth is it's that poor people are suffering. Poor people are suffering. Yeah. And in the United States, the poor people are largely from the African-American community. It's the cart before the horse. In other words, it's poverty is the problem. And the you problem get, in America. And, and you, yes, you get on to what's happening uh, in America now. Um, An and active economic exclusion. So it's the cart and the horse and the chicken and the egg. It's, it's, a, it's a complicated game. I mean, it seems to me that diversity and inclusion and other things, intercultural tolerance and ways forward, we, we are probably going to lose a decade of progress uh, this year. Um, Possibly, but though I, I will say, and I, when I was thinking about my, my concept of cultural competitive advantage, yeah. I've often used the, the, to explain that by saying that I believe that uh, organizations, countries, cultures that include people in their, in their work and in their, uh, their development include every aspect of it, whether it's every religious group, every um, male, female, everything is included in all of that they're likely to be more successful and we yes, know yes, that yes, yes. those that exclude yes. people yeah. are not going to be successful and we should not lose sight of that yeah because that that is a truism it's absolutely true i had an exchange with a colleague recently and i said you know it always surprised me that it that it's a surprise to companies to find that diversity and inclusion are a good idea <laughs> How, how could you not know that? Because <laughs> maybe it's a bit like this call, some pale male stales are preserving the power that they think they've worked hard to get. But that's a, that's a different thing. No, exactly. Yes. No, no, we, we know yes. the positive business case for diversity and inclusion. Mate, it's been fabulous. Absolutely. We wish you well. We maybe speak to you again at uh, some other stage. But thanks, our intrepid intercultural reporter just outside Dublin. Cheers, Joe. Take it easy, mate. Thanks very much, Matthew. Thanks, viewers. Bye. See you soon.